So it's 1210 and I'm going to get started. So welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I tell you, this is awesome to see you because number one, you spent, you're spending time with us and number two, you're investing in yourself. And time is important. Time is extremely important. Uh, one of my favorite authors says, all great achievements require time. Maya Angelou, and, and you're investing in yourself uh, and, and in hopes of some level of achievement. And uh, the name of this presentation is Leveling Up Your Career. And uh, I'm, I'm not 100% an expert on anything, but I can tell you I've had enough no's and uh, enough downs to, to get to my ups and, and to my yeses. And so I got a little bit of experience on both sides of the, of the, of the chair, as they say. <laughs> And so therefore, hopefully between myself and this room of additional HR professionals, we'll be able to help guide you and, 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 and perhaps say something today that can really help level you up to your next career, you know, next level in your career. Um, objective for me today that I'm going to share is that we'll share several job seeking tools to help take your career to the next level. You'll get a chance to put some of the tools into practice, and then we will also um, conduct mock interviews and give you feedback uh, to help you in your search. Now, that's what I think that you want to learn, but I'm always interested also in knowing what your expectations are. Is there anything that you would like to walk away from this experience after we've been here for just under two hours today? Uh, that you would like to say, I came and I received what I wanted today. Anything that you can think of? Nothing? We'll just see how it goes. We're an open book. You can always ask questions as we get into the presentation or afterwards, and we're happy to respond. Uh, again, working lunch presentation, practice skills, mock interviews. Before we jump into the presentation, though, I would love to just kind of do formal introductions. My name's Irene Blue. I'm the Director of Human Resources and Organizational Development here at the Cedar Lucas County Public Library, and I welcome you. Uh, also in the room on my team, we have here, Jeff Godzak. <laughs> Jeff Godzak is our HR manager, and he is like in the in the trenches. He's his his boots on the grounds for the day-to-day -day operations of all the different types of uh, employee relations, labor relations types of activities that we do on his team. Uh, HR Joe's Tom Posadny, uh, new to new to the library as along with myself, uh, and as well as JC, uh, she's been with the library for a number of years, JC Duffer, uh, she's left the room to help me out with those copies, uh, and she's on her way back in, perfect timing, uh, but JC has uh, been with the, with the system, how many years, JC? 25. 25, she was like three when she started, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, so well, JC's been with us for about 25 years. If you could give those to the, the uh, ladies in the back who did not get a copy. Thank you. Awesome. So, and then in the room, can we just really quickly introduce yourselves and tell us kind of what you're doing currently and what you're hoping to get out of the presentation? You want to start? Okay, all right. I'm Abby, and Adult Services Librarian at Oregon, and I've not interviewed in a long time. Okay, haven't interviewed in yeah. a long time. I'm Joy Sova. I am a Teen Services Librarian at the main library just upstairs. Um, and I think I'm a terrible interviewer. <laughs> so let's just brush up on everything. Okay, okay. <laughs> and next? Um, I'm Leanna. So I hear interviewing is a huge piece we're going to cover today. Well, I hope that we can help you out and that we can really 
give you some confidence and some tools when you walk out of this room and you will no longer be able to say that you are a terrible interviewer. We're going to give it's a formula to interviewing, right? There's a formula and so we're going to help you with that and I think that with all of us HR professionals, we're going to we're going to button you guys up well, okay? Not going to promise that, you know, you're going to knock them dead on the next interview. That's quote quote unquote one of my favorite books I would always use. Uh, but at least it, it will get you to a place where you're thinking about these types of things and and, and it's definitely going to mark, be marked improvement in my opinion, okay? I'm not going to promise that walking out of here the next time you interview, Irene said I was going to get that job. Because uh, <laughs> I told you I had more no's than yeses. But every no helped build me up and prepare me until I got to that yes that I was supposed to have, okay? All right, so let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. I, let's start with my story. Let's start with my story. I keep saying I had more no's than yeses, right? I've been over. I've been in human resources. Just a little bit of my background. I, I, I graduated from um, my undergrad program. Uh, worked uh, a little bit of retail, found out, oh, I really like the recruiting piece in retail. And so I set my mind and my heart on a human resource opportunity, uh, got selected for a company that was a welfare to work program before they even named it that, modeled what, you know, uh, returning to work would be or entering the work environment would be for the very first time. And so therefore that organization was a great foundation for me in learning how to connect people with opportunities uh, and look at jobs, look at careers, and help guide people in that process. I then um, finished my master's degree, uh, found out about different opportunities in the city, told my friend about an opportunity in the health system. She got pulled into that health system, later pulled me into that health system, and there you go. My career is off and running into an actual full-service human resource department. After that opportunity, another friend told me about an opportunity in a manufacturing facility. Apply, got that opportunity. And then I ended up getting married and relocating to, to Ohio, seven months, 30 pounds, and a lost patch of hair later because it was extremely difficult transferring here and moving here uh, and, and establishing myself in a career in this city coming from my environment and the places I'd work. And, uh, but I did get an opportunity with Payless Shoe Source, not Payless, excuse me, with Home Depot. Uh, that was my first retail job, uh, but with Home Depot. Um, and so again, you know, trudging my way along, I was in HR there, uh, got an opportunity shortly after about a year or so with Home Depot with Walgreens. I spent the bulk of my career at Walgreens, 15 years. And within the organization, there were opportunities to move up within our location as well as other locations. And I kept trying and trying and trying, and I kept getting turned down for opportunities and I couldn't understand why, okay? And even applying outside of Walgreens, they paid very well. I would get opportunities that wanted to pay me what I was making like 10, 15 years before I even started that job. So it was really difficult to make the move. And um, I then also started to work rotate to night shift with Walgreens. We were, we, I started off working days or seconds, but then they went to a 24 hour model. And so in HR, you would work from 9P to 5A or 11 to 7. My craziest schedule was working from 1 a.m. until 11 a.m. because of conflicts with childcare and our schedules. And so I made the decision to jump and said, no matter what, you know, if they're close to my salary, I'm gonna leave. Uh, because I've, I've got teenagers now. I had my babies when I first got there and I was like, I didn't want to work night shift with teenagers and you know why, okay? <laughs> so I um, took the leap and I uh, went to First Solar after leaving Walgreens, stayed there for about three years and then an opportunity with Able opened up as a director and they took a chance on me and they hired me as a director even though I had all this HR experience. I'd only been a manager for a few years when I was with Home Depot but they took a chance on me and brought me in as an HR director. Phenomenal group of folk there, phenomenal experience, but I saw the opportunity here at the library and I said, I gotta put my name in the hat. It's a great you know, opportunity. You know, and books everywhere, those are my people, right? And so put my name in the hat and I am very grateful to be here, very grateful for the opportunity. And when I tell you I have more no's than yeses, it's a testament. I mean, it's just like, you get so frustrated. And I even got to a point where I was like, why can't I get 
into that next level in my career? Why can't I get into that next opportunity? And so there were some things um, that I had to do um, that I, I did in my career to help me navigate through those no's, those disappointments, those you know, moments when I felt rejected and not valued, not appreciated. And this is what I did. I took a personal attitude. I took a, a personal inventory, took a personal inventory, looked at my attitude, you know, looked at my attitude, my image, my brand, my social image presence, our social media presence, my social network image, everything about myself that could potentially be viewed negatively. I took a personal inventory. Would you imagine, you know, interviewing within an organization five or six times that you might get a little frustrated and you might articulate your frustrations with certain people? Maybe that gets back to a person that's on the interviewing committee and they know that you're not happy about not getting selected. You know, so did I have a negative attitude at one time or another? Hmm, probably so. Did someone probably perceive that that was in a decision making position? Hmm, probably so. You know, and so did I do anything to perhaps sabotage, sabotage my own growth? We have to be honest with ourselves, right? We have to look at what was my attitude really like? Was I still showing up? Was I still giving the top quality work? I still did my work, you know, but were there parts of my attitude or parts of my opinion that I had about the process that may not have favored, in my, in, favored me? Could have been some of that, or it could have been that this person was just preferred over me. Maybe they wanted someone that was just running hard and doing some of the things in their career that I may not have been doing at that time. All right. Or maybe that person provided some value, filled some gap that I wasn't able to at that time. I started doing also personal investment uh, within myself or for myself, like you guys are doing today. I looked at, looked at my resume and I said, like, eh, I don't like this resume. Let me pay and get my resume done professionally. See how much it'll cost. A couple hundred bucks, it's worth a while, you know, worthwhile to do it. If I don't like it, I can still tweak it more and, and do it how I want it done. But let me see what's, what's new and what's fancy, what's happening out there. So I, I actually paid and got my resume done. I maintain my certifications with SHRM. Uh, I try to stay connected and go to regular meetings uh, with, it was called Toledo Human Resources, Tara at that time, but it's now Nora. But I try to stay connected and involved. Uh, I pursued additional educational opportunities, even if it were just certificates or just a class or just a, uh, a seminar that I would attend that would just continue to help me to grow and learn as an HR professional, to make myself more knowledgeable, more advanced than anyone that I was working with that would help me along the way, not to be, you know, to be arrogant or anything of that nature, but to set myself aside, apart from others. Uh, professional connections, again, networking, social networking. One key thing that you probably heard earlier in my career when I worked for that welfare to work program, I would get those job leads. I gave those job leads to a friend who was already further along in her career in HR. She got selected into that major health system. And when an entry level position opened up, she said, you need to apply for this. So it was kind of, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. And then again, someone completely random said, hey, do you know anyone that's interested in this job? I put my name in the hat for it and I got selected. Okay, so networking, talking to your friends, talking to folks and letting them know who you're interested in or what you're interested in and maybe finding out what they're interested in. If you find out about a job that they could be interested in, sharing that information with them. You just never know when it's going to come back around to you. In my case, it came around really quickly in that situation. And they, I made up my mind when I was going through the interview process that they need me just as much as I want them. So I, I, I got over the fear thing, okay? Because after so many no's, it was just like, I knew my value and I knew my worth. And it was just like, okay, you need someone in this role. I know the skills I have. I know my worth. I know my value. I know what I bring to the table. I, nerves aside, this is, a, this is, a, this is a, an agreement. You wouldn't be nervous and scared if you were sitting across from a banker or from across a mortgage broker. Same kind of thing. We're making an employment contract here, basically. Not a contract as according to the legal terms, but you're giving something and I'm receiving something and same thing, it's reciprocal here. You know, so I got past the willies, got past the fear, and I said, they want something that I'm giving. 
and I got, and I want something that they're giving. So we need to come to a meeting of the minds, get out of my own head, and let's do this, okay? <laughs> That's basically what I said. I, I, I just said, forget being scared in the interview. Forget it. You know, this is about what they want and what they need as a candidate and what I can bring to the table to help them fulfill that need. Okay, gets a little scary a little bit when it comes to negotiating the rate for particularly for women. They say that we're the worst negotiators. But, you know, even in that, I said, you know what? And my husband used to do this when he was interviewing. He would he would they would, you know, the different companies he would travel and he would go and interview out of town and whatnot. And they would pay for meals and he had a certain stipend and, and whatnot. And he says, you know what? I'm going to eat myself a good dinner for this interview. He says, because if they like me, they won't care. And if they don't like me, I won't care. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, that made sense. This is about negotiating. So he negotiated and he wasn't apologetic for, you know, taking on uh, an opportunity, looking at it, negotiating, getting the best for himself in that situation. And as women, we need to do the same thing, okay? Just putting that little plug in there. And then copycat. Uh, this is one where becoming an indispensable and in irreplaceable asset. I think about two people who were passed over, who passed over me, uh, got passed over for promotions for HR manager when I was with Walgreens. One person in particular uh, was co collaborating, rubbing elbows, doing golf outings, things of that nature with some of our leaders. I was over here doing some of the other types of fundraising events, but I wasn't necessarily in very visible positions, uh, very visible activities that they would, you know, I would say 100% respect or, or, or have a great following, okay? Um, I, I noticed that there was just this connection and this camaraderie as a result of that individual being in those circles. The other person was just that irreplaceable, uh, indispensable assistant. If you needed, you know, something done, they were just all over it, you know, and it's just like, man, you'll do so many things, so much more above and beyond what's expected. And I would often warn them, you're going to burn yourself out if you keep doing and operating at that level. And unfortunately, I mean, yeah, they, they worked really hard, but at the same time, they got to that role, but then at the same time, they did kind of, you know, overdo it to the point where it's just like, you know what, Where's, where do you draw the line with going above and beyond? You can go above and beyond to the point where it does burn you out, you know, but at the end of the day, you have to balance that, but you still have to do things that are visible, that are, um, that are, that are, sh that are feeling a need within that organization. Okay. And so that those individuals did that, they did that. And therefore they had that visibility and they got promoted in that situation. Some of the other top personal interview hot hacks, I learned as much as I could about the organizations whenever I was interviewing for them. Okay. Go online, find out information about those organizations, look at their, um, uh, any of their PR, um, their public relations announcements, anything that's happening, any, any, any uh, plans that they have, are they breaking ground somewhere else? What's happening? What's new? Is there a new product? What's happening within that organization? At least you look as if you care enough to find something out about that organization. I interview myself with the questions that match the job. So, for example, every time you see a job ad, and this will help you when you're interviewing, they always tell you what the required skills are. And not, it even helps you before the interview, because if your resume does not specify those top skills that they're looking for, oftentimes the job, um, if, and if, it has, if, if that organization has a, a, an excellent recruiting system, it will screen out certain candidates. It will screen you out because you don't have those key words. Uh, so, for example, at First Solar, when I was working there, we had a team of recruiters. And they had been brought in to um, do hiring for the new facility that was built. And what would happen, oftentimes, people who'd been there for 10 years, they would just give their old resume. They hadn't updated their resume. Uh, they hadn't entered any of the new skills or specified the tasks that they were doing uh, or the skills that were required for the position, they wouldn't even get an interview. And part of it, like if, if the job required, um, you know, uh, quality checks, 
and they didn't never put the word quality checks or auditing or anything of that nature in their resume, they weren't considered. They may have just had machine operator and they didn't go into detail of any of the fringe activities that they'd done. And so in that situation, they would get passed over. And so it's very important to, when you look at those job leads from that organization, is to interview yourself with those questions and also make sure that your information matches what they're looking for. That it, that, that, that uh, applicant tracking system can pull you out of the bunch if it's an applicant tracking um particularly for you, if you're applying for these different companies and they say they, they want certain skills, three to five years of customer service experience, two years worth of um, uh, accounting experience, you need to specify that either in your cover letter, your resume, somewhere in your documentation so you're not screened out. Determine what the company uh, needed and what I offered. So that was something I did. I looked at what the company is saying that they needed and I made sure I highlighted that. There's a reason that companies put information. Sometimes they have a candidate that they may hire someone. They may tweak their job description to make sure that they specify a, a skill that's needed in that job so that it's not missed. So if you match those skills, make sure that you include that in your information and that's articulated during the interview. And one thing I also realized is that I could not give up. I could not lose hope. I could not lose my faith. I could not give up. That's the most important thing that you can do. No doesn't mean no. Sometimes it just means not now. And you have to keep trying. You have to keep refining what you've done. Get the feedback. It might sting a little bit. Again, that goes into that personal inventory. Look at the person that got promoted. What did they do different? You know, and I mean, that's a, that's a validity check or, you know, a quality check or whatever you want to call it where you're doing this self-reflection. And it's hard sometimes. It's hard to be honest with yourself when you know you've been ugly and you didn't, you, you, you don't want to admit it, but you were probably a little ugly there, you know, but okay, recalibrate. This is where I am. It's no does not mean no. It just means not now. And you keep going. You keep going. You keep pursuing your goals. Now, I'm one person. That's my story. I'm not the only person that's been through this. And so as I was recruit, looking into information for this um, presentation, uh, pulled up a great um, person that I thought had a lot of energy, very positive. Her name was Brittany Hills, Brittany Hills Consulting. And she had a lot of the same things to say. She said, first of all, what you want to do is if you're looking to improve your, your interviewing skills, obviously you're looking to improve your interviewing skills because you want to interview because possibly moving up or advancing in your career. And so she said to create a yearly career plan with three goals and work toward it. Okay. And then she also said, so says, define your personal brand early. I did and exemplify it. So what do people say about you? You know, when they look, when they talk about you, do they say you smile naturally, that you're, you're very helpful, you know, and so that becomes who you are. What do you, what do your coworkers say about you? And what is, what does your family say about you? That's your brand. That's your personal brand, you know? And then she also says, be coachable and open to feedback and apply it. I've been told, you're tough to give feedback to. It's like, well, were you the right person to give me feedback? <laughs> you know, yeah, if you think you're smarter than them, you're like, how can you give me feedback? But you know what? You can even learn from a child. So you have to be coachable. You have to be coachable and you have to take that tough feedback. Swallow it, process it, think about it, get past your emotions, apply it, okay? Apply that feedback and then move forward. Have a dedicated mentor. Who do you know? Who do you look at? And who do you see executing in a way that inspires you? And can that person become your mentor? Can that person become your dedicated mentor? Who do you look up to? And who can give you positive feedback that will help you along the way? One thing you also want to do is research before asking for help and be a self-starter. You know, a lot of the information that I share with you, you can pull it right up online. You know, and it's right there in your face, you know, and it's just like, well, how do you, how do you do this? How do you improve in this way? Try your best. Do something on your own to try to figure it out. Are, are you afraid? Do you like, I, I had one friend who literally when she stood before an audience, you know, of this size, her legs would just shake. I mean, she would literally shake. It was a physical fear of talking in front of people. They said that there are two things that people fear most. Death is number one. And number two is talking in front of people. And some folks would rather die than talk in front of people. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so 
so if you have a fear of being in front of an interview panel or talking in front of folk, then, you know, perhaps get with an organization uh, and, and, and work on your public speaking, you know, invest in yourself, do something to be a self-starter. She says, master self-promotion. This is another thing that they say women have a hard time doing. Uh, it's kind of tooting your own horn, uh, selling yourself on projects and ideas you've served or um, that you've shared. Uh, sometimes it's hard to toot your own horn, but I, I just say it like this. If it's the truth, it's not bragging, okay? And if you do it in a way with humility where you're sharing, these are the projects I've worked on. I've been able to do this and that and the other, and I can help you with that if you'd like. You know, it's in a, in a, in a, in a spirit of helping and, and, and deference, but you're at the same time sharing those things that you've done, okay? It's not bragging. It's not being uppity or anything of that nature. It's okay to share those things that you've done that's been helpful and how you can help someone else. Meet with your manager's manager to be visible and learn more about the field. So if you've never had an opportunity to meet with your upper leadership within your organization, like I, they call it a skip level, not your direct supervisor, but your boss's boss. So just say, hey, I just love to take an opportunity to learn more about, you know, the vision of the organization, how, how you got to your role, and, and just have those conversations. And maybe even in those conversations, this is some of the things I've been able to do in my department that I found to be very helpful and when I would love to see them spread across the region or things of that nature, or even if you're within, uh, you know, not necessarily within your organiz uh, within organization right now, but when we have an opportunity to do so, to be able to have those conversations and not fear sharing, you know, things that you've done within your, your current role with your boss as well as your boss's boss. That gives you visibility, helps you learn more about what they have done in their field to get to that level. Uh, and again, it's just a networking opportunity within your organization. Prioritize your mental and physical health. You know, so many times we burn both ends of the count, and I know I do it too, I'm a late, I'm a late night person, I'm up late, but eat right, you know, sleep right, try to get some exercise, you know. Um, that was a huge thing, I, I had to take a lot of, you know, personal stock on my health, and I had to do a lot of work to get my health back into into uh, a safe place. I'll say that. You know, I really had to work at what my outward image looked like. You know, it didn't necessarily display who I really am. You know, it didn't display the energy and everything that I was bringing. It was not the energy that I was projecting, and so I worked on that, and I continue to fight with it and work on it every day. Network at work. Network at work. Is someone working on a project that you can help them with? And by showing yourself to be helpful and showing yourself to be collaborative, that puts your name in a very positive light. You know, instead of this kind of, like, this is my project and I'm not going to work on this unless I, it's my department, my area. No, be that indispensable assistant, you know. And even though you don't work for that manager, that work with that team, help others out. You know, it doesn't hurt anyone to help someone else out. It just looks you, makes you look more collaborative and more of a team player. And then do your job plus one, exceed expectations. This is hard, like I told you, but the person like I told you that, that, was, that, that was elevated in, in, in her role, she did this and she was rewarded for it, you know? And so I encourage you to, to go above and beyond expectations. You know, within reason. We don't want to burn ourselves out and burn ourselves up. But if there's something that you can do, some value that you can bring to your organization, then by all means, do it. And it, you'll get recognized for it. Maybe you won't get promoted. Maybe you, you're happy growing where you're planted. But you'll be at least given an opportunity to, to be recognized in some formal manner. Getting the interview and nailing it. I want to make sure I didn't skip a... Uh, what, what, I want to. I, I skipped the slide, didn't I? Let's look here. You search for yourself, bar starter, network at NERC. Okay, and then understand what matters most to your manager and your company. Again, that's kind of knowing what's popular, what's what's being monitored at that time. Is it the golf outing or is it some other event that you're doing? You want to make sure you're doing what's visible. Uh, another person, another reason she was uh, not just being that indispensable uh, assistant, but she was working on a project that was really key to the organization at that time. Be an expert in your role and go beyond expectations. Fill a gap on your team by fulfilling a project or a gap. Become a thought leader for your organization, the go-to person for knowledge. So even though you may not, sometimes you can't go out and do other things. You just can't, right? You're just restricted. But if you're that go-to person 
And you, you know how to fix the copier. You know how to, you know, work this. You know how to do that. You're just the go-to person. You know where things are. You're the resource for your organization, for your boss. Are you that person? Are you are you operating at that at that level? Or do you just come in, do the bare minimum, and leave? You know, and so those are some, some of the things to make yourself more visible and uh, make yourself someone that's recommended for that next opportunity. And then promote yourself uh, and, and, and really, you know, share. Share things that you're doing. Who knows about you? Who knows about those special projects for, that, that we're doing? Is this a regional thing that we're, we're doing now and it was because of something that you did? Then others should know about that. Uh, here we are getting the interview and nailing it. One thing I, I did uh, when I was interviewing for various positions, even recently, I would network. I was, I'm on LinkedIn and I was, I, I kind of hid myself now because I was getting so many solicitation calls being new to the library. But with LinkedIn, if there was an HR person that was previously in the position that I was interviewing for, I would reach out to them and then, hey, what's the inside scoop? What's it really like working there? Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. And do you know people tell you all the dish? They tell you all the dish, you know, and so it's really nice to to have um, have um, uh, in a, a LinkedIn profile or other social networking profiles so that you can um, reach out to those individuals and and have a connection and get information and get insight. You may you never know. You may run into someone that, you know. And then in that situation, they can say, hey, I know this person. You should consider them, you know. So network, um, do your research on the organization. Make sure your resume, like I talked about, aligns with the position that you're applying for. Use keywords. Like I said, recruiting, recruiters and applicant tracking uh, uh, systems will screen your name out if you have not included that information in that resume or that cover letter. Some companies don't even use cover letters, so your objective better darn well sure have that information in there. Uh, be relatable and be approachable. Uh, match the energy of the interviewer. You know, I've, I've had interviews, especially phone interviews, and now we've got Zoom, but phone interviews, they would call you and they would be like up here, like, hi, how are you? Well, you need to at least not necessarily go all the way up to where they are, but you can't come in after they've, they've given you that much energy. Hi, how are you? You know, you got to match their energy, right? You got you to gotta relate to them and make them feel as if you're on the same level that they are, okay? Kind of know what the interviewer wants or definitely know what the interview wants and articulate your skills and, and, um, and, and that matches what they're looking for. Any of your abilities, your skills that match what you're looking for. That you've got the, the opportunity to do that phone interview because, hey, your skills, your, 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 your abilities match what they're looking for. If they say at a degree, you have a bachelor's degree and they're wanting a bachelor's, great. If they say three years experience, you got four years experience, great. Now, what are some of the soft skills that they're looking for? Okay, because you got the foundation. So what's the next step? What 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 gets you past that? And is it part is the, is having that personality come out during that interview process that aligns and, and makes makes you relatable to the interviewing team? Okay, to the gatekeepers. Dress the part. I always tell folk that your first impressions are your only impressions. First impressions are your only impressions. I wore this dress before and I noticed that it kept dropping down. It's a little, I'm short. So most clothes are cut for taller people and it kept dropping down. And I'm like, okay, I don't, I mean, it's an interview. It's, it's not a date, <laughs> you know, so dress appropriately, dress the part for guys. You know, you know, I, I have mints out. I said, I, we're going to be eating pizza. We don't want to offend. You know, I, I remember interviewing with one guy, <laughs> heck, and uh, from Walgreens, <laughs> his first interview. And I said, okay, next time when you go on an interview, one squirt of cologne, one squirt. <laughs> it's like, it feels like we've been wrestling in the interview room because we had these tiny interview rooms, you know, but dress the part, you know, if you're going for uh, any type of promotional opportunity, you know, wear wear, uh, you know, business casual at least, you know, and make it appropriate for a business setting. You're not going on a date, not too casual. You know, I'm, I'm of the mind, you know, wear a jacket, you know, wear a dress, wear a skirt, uh, wear dress pants, you know, uh, and, and dress shoes. Uh, I've worn, I've, I've got pants suits, I've got dress suits, uh, whatever, you know, as long as it's professional uh, for an interview, you know, setting, uh, because again, 
First impressions are only impressions, all right? You don't get second hand chances and you want to make sure that you nail it when you have an opportunity uh, to get in front of that person. Uh, with Zoom interviews being very pop popular, you want to make sure that uh, if it's an interview, you you if you if your whole house is trashed, you need to find a corner that's about that big, right? Get in that corner as long as that chair can sit there, and you can put your put your little uh here we go like your phone on a little clip there or something, and that way that's all they see. No one's walking behind. They, Put the dog in the closet or wherever you need to put them so that they're not barking during your interview. That's your one time to shine, you know, and so appropriate, you know, you know, grooming, things of that nature uh, so that, you know, that that interviewer, um, you know, believes that you're you're, you're going to knock them dead and that they believe that you that you prepared and uh, are really uh, interested in pursuing this opportunity. So one thing I want to do is just, again, uh, express that much of the information that I've given you is available online. I, I went through, I pulled like your top 10 uh, interview questions, top 10 behavioral based interview questions, uh, some pointers uh, that's contained in the packet that I've given you uh, regarding your job search. Uh, I've referenced a, a number of, of different tools for you that you could all easily find on your own. What you don't get a chance to do oftentimes is talk to someone in HR, sit across from them, and, and just kind of go through this kind of thing. And so that's what we're going to do right now is just take some time. We're going to use, I've given you some samples here, and that, I'll go through them. Because I didn't know who was going to be in the room today. And so what I did was just went online. I found some sample job descriptions. You do not have to use these. You can pull up a job that you are interested in applying for and take that job. And then what we're going to do is look at, and I've given you also in that packet. And I don't think I have the whole packet. Do I? Let's see. I'm going to steal a packet from someone. I got one here on the end. So also in, enclosed here in your packet is developing an elevator pitch for your job search, as well as an interview cheat sheet. The interview cheat sheet's important because like I mentioned, when you go to look at that job, you go to look at this job description, like the samples that I've included in your packet, you want to be able to look up information about that company. What's the company's mission? What do they do? What's happening in the news? Information about yourself. yourself. Remember your personal brand I talked about? What's unique about you? What value do you bring? What soft skills do you bring in addition to your knowledge, skills, and experience? Those, those job related things what do you bring that sets you apart from other candidates so skills relevant experience strengths weaknesses why this company why are you interested in that organization what about that organization draws you there what about their mission draws you there what can you bring to enhance that organization and then questions to prepare for and then we have additional questions in your packet there are key questions every company is going to ask you. And I would write these answers down, not to say that I, it, it was done in a, in a rote manner, but if I had an idea of what I would say, it's not that you memorize it word for word, but you, have, you should have a ready response for some of these questions that you know they're gonna come, all right? You're, you're automatically gonna know question. Why are you interested in this position? What, what, why should we hire you for this position? What about this job made you interested? Tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. Those are questions that every interview, I don't care how, you know where you go, someone either on the phone screen or someone face-to-face -face is gonna ask you some of those types of questions and you should prepare an answer for it, right? And be able to articulate that. Developing your elevator speech. This is just a way of being able to, see, the first question they're gonna ask is tell me about yourself. And that's kind of your elevator speech. You know, being able to say, well, going briefly through your job history and some of the you know your accomplishments real briefly to be able to articulate that information and so what we're going to do is give you an opportunity to look at one of the jobs that either i've given you that you would say hey this one might be an interesting one to look at or pull up one that you want to apply for 
okay or a similar job to what you would be interested in applying for and then we're going to walk through this process of developing an elevator speech of looking at that job looking at that company preparing um your information that would be reflective in that interview setting because it's like every time you look at that job and that ad two things you're going to be looking at doing up making sure that your resume and cover letter letter are reflective of that of of what the, what's in that job ad and then thinking of interview questions related to that job ad and having a ready response. And so that's what we want to help you with today and help you prepare for as you look at the next job that you interview for uh, and be, be ready with a ready answer uh, when, you, when those questions face you. Do we have any questions on those instructions at this point? Okay, so we've got four individuals and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, basically HR folk. And we can tag team and work on you, want, work with you one-on-one -on -one, uh, so that we can go through this. So we're gonna, again, use the sample job that we provided, or you can pull up a job that you want to apply for on your phone. Uh, you'll wanna complete the interview cheat sheet. And I, I, brought, I gave you some uh, index cards so that you can save your cheat sheet and your elevator speech. So if you wanna make copies of it later, um, and I gave you index cards to write on. You'll want to consider the questions a potential employer will ask, and then you'll want to respond to the interview questions using the STAR method. Now, the STAR method's pretty cool. Um, this is one that uh, Aaron mentioned, and how many folks have heard of the STAR interviewing method? method? Anyone? Okay. Uh, what about just being specific? What does that mean to you when someone asks you to be specific in an interview question? Sometimes they'll say, give me an example of a time when you had a conflict with another coworker. Give me, an, give me a specific example. And you, you can't say I've never had a conflict, okay? Maybe you could, but most of us have had some kind of level of disagreement, even if it was, well, I want to run the copiers and have you, uh, you know, use the facts. It's something minor, you know? It didn't have to be a major, you know, knockdown, drag out fight. But when you go to answer a question like that, they are looking for you to give, or we are looking for you to give us a time, place, event, and an outcome, okay? What the STAR method does is really defines that, okay? It's saying, listen to the question, think of the event, plan and organize five or eight seconds. So oftentimes when you're interviewing, someone asks you a question, give me an example of some, a time you had a conflict with a coworker. If you don't want to immediately answer that question, take a sip of water, think about it, Seconds are going on. Can you repeat that for me, please? It's okay to ask them to repeat the question once. Perfectly fine. Gives you time to collect yourself and think about a specific response. Because sometimes we got to think back to an example. But that goes into preparing ahead because you know there are certain key questions they're going to ask you, right? So if you already have written down and jotted down in your homework some sample answers to these weird questions they may ask, you'll be prepared. But just in case they give you a zinger, something you didn't think of or didn't prepare for, that's a tactic that I often use. Take a sip of water, ask them to repeat it, and then come up with my answer. So the STAR method, the first thing you'll give is the situation. Provide context, a background, and what happened in that situation. Describe the problem, the challenges will be the task portion, and then the actions, what happened, and then the result. Sometimes the result's negative, okay? And if the result was negative, guess what we have to add on? What we learned from that experience. Whenever you can articulate, even if it was a negative experience, what you learned from that experience, it shows growth and it makes a huge difference. So that is the STAR method. Please familiarize yourself with that because we're gonna practice this as we are asking interview questions. One thing I also added here is always respond to questions with specific answers. Specific answers. Past time, place, or event, which ties the skills and requirements of the job you seek. This demonstrates you as a qualified candidate who has performed the job. That's what behavioral-based interviewing does. It looks at past history to hopefully anticipate what your future actions would be if you were selected for that position. Do we have any questions? Uh, all right, do we have to clarify anything on what we're gonna do next? Okay. 
okay? So you all can stay in your seats. And what we're gonna do is have one of our HR professionals each get with e either of you. Uh, two of them can tag team if you'd like. Sure. For that i apologize <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> you can't remember everything so you got to have someone to back you up and i apologize for missing that so but again we have you have some awesome heavy hitters here that can help you walk through this and i thank you for your attention and listening to me but we want to spend this next hour reviewing your resume going through some questions with you and helping you to take this to the next step do you feel a little bit better off right now just uh just kind of knowing what we're going to do Awesome. So again, thank you. And I look forward to hearing feedback uh, um, from how, how this, you know, how you're able to apply this and, and hopes the, the next opportunity uh, uh, is a win for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. And eat while you're doing your mocking. Yes, please do. <laughs> please have pizza. Thank you, everyone.